Alright, welcome to Nosy Joe's coverage of MSXC Round 7, the Glacier Run for 2024. I'm in Senior C, Row 16. You can see the conditions are pretty tough this year, really earning the name of the race. There's a high of 27 this day. I'm not sure if it got there or not. It had been freezing all week. The ground was well frozen. About the only good thing you could say is there wasn't any mud. I'm riding a 1993 XR600R. Kickstart. Typically this bike is not an advantage, but these last two races the mudder last week in this uh, frozen race I actually felt like it was an advantage I was able to get some traction but these modern lightweight bikes were not I'm going to show you my first lap of three it wasn't my fastest but honestly I was pretty consistent at about 32 minutes did three laps, it was a 90 minute race, so come in at an hour and 36 in fourth place out of 12 in my class. I'm trying to find some alternate routes here, but uh, right away find a slick spot here. Luckily keep the bike running and don't kill it so I can keep on going. Here's Chad Lester and his Yamaha kickstart to my left there. He's the only other kickstart bike in my class. He had trouble getting it started and stopped after two laps, he told me. I uh, had a little trick on getting it started today. I brought my generator and ran a heat gun on the cylinder for about 25 minutes before I even started to try to kick it over, and it did fine then. And a couple times I did kill it. I did get it restarted fairly easily. Luckily I had the idle set pretty high and with the slick conditions I didn't kill it very often. So overall the kickstart 600 didn't hurt me too much. Lots of guys having trouble here. I think that's Royce Bailey on his newer Honda. down uh, Jose here on a KTM. He and I go back and forth several times during the race, which you'll see. It's kind of interesting, this first lap, trying to figure out what was slick and what wasn't. Here where the exposed brown dirt was, was actually good. Then you get into a little bit of powder, and then you get into the trees, and the trees were often the slickest spots it here. This is one of the spots that I have to restart it by neutral. I'm wearing uh, Oakley snowboarding gloves if you're interested in how I kept my hands warm. They're a warm weather snowboarding glove, um, but they're made very similar to a dirt bike glove, so I have really good feel grips and levers with them, and there's some type of a plastic shielding in them of some sort so the air doesn't penetrate them like a regular glove. So I've let Jose get ahead of me after that little kick start, so i got to chase him down again. Look for the brownest of the brown dirt paths line selection. Try to use a little bit of bank whenever I can.
everybody raced Sunday, the youth bikes and the ATVs and everybody, so we were last being the adult bikes, so everybody else had kind of plowed a path for us, which was nice in some cases, but in other cases, they just kind of polished the ice and made it slicker for us. thought a lot about tires this week, not knowing whether it was going to be muddy or just hard. I kind of decided it was just going to be kind of hard, um, but that didn't really make a lot of difference. I just ran the tires I always run. I did run a little bit lower pressure in the back. So the BE33S made by IRC, in the back that's the Jakota version a hybrid gummy. I ran it at about 7 pounds, which on the XR600 is about like running 4 or 5 on a modern two-stroke as far as the way it kind of compresses. And then I ran the VX40 in the front, which is what I've been running this year on this bike, which is an intermediate hard and I think I, I didn't really check it. I just kind of went by feel. There's Jose getting around me again. But I would guess I was running about 12 pounds as opposed to my normal 14 on that tire. It's pretty soft carcass. Find an alternate route around these guys through the snow. KX ahead of me. He hears the big bumper and decides to let me go on past. I'm trying to decide which line is the best. Oftentimes they just kind of all look the same. Just try to pick a line to avoid other people. Not a good day for Yamaha's, it doesn't seem. This glacier run has always held at Russell Creek, which is in Greensburg, Kentucky. It's a neat place. Um, when the weather's decent, you actually get to normally run down a creek and stuff like that, but they didn't put that in there. And they also have a motocross track, which you see just a small portion of kind of near the last portion of the race but uh, we didn't really get to spend any time on it either but if you come here in the summer you get a good mix of woods and motocross track and creek and decent hill climbs but they kind of made it just knowing how the weather was going to be just a real doable course and I think a lot of this trail was pre-existing I've been here several times between MSXC and KXCR. A lot of this was kind of familiar. Not that that was much of an advantage since we were fighting the conditions more than the course. I run this bike kind of fat on the Pilot Joe. There's another slick spot. Oh, and I killed it. I was going to say I run this carb a little fat on the pilot jet, but today, with the temperatures, I think it was actually just right. Didn't make it start any easier, though, because that's why I run it fat, to be honest. Trying 
get out of these guys' way before I can take the time to re-kick it. <clears throat> there is kind of a secret method of restarting these XR600s if you can find top dead center. Which is what I'm trying to do there. And sometimes I just get impatient and start kicking it. When the bike's been tipped over, sometimes that's what it needs actually. It's just it's just gonna take so many kicks to get it. a lot of places here that I just gained that. And I think that's the main disadvantage of this bike. People ask me about it all the time. Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, it's old technology. None of that's necessarily a problem at, the, at my capability level. But this thing definitely has cost me some spots. Especially in earlier races, not so much this one. Just from the kickstart and starting not being able to just hit a button when you make a mistake and get going again has has been a disadvantage. It's made, you know, a twenty second mistake sometimes become a three minute mistake. But having said that, I don't have a lot of money in the bike and it's a very comfortable bike. bad conditions, whether that be a mudder or this ice race here. I've been able to find a lot of traction with the bike that um, I don't know that I would have found on another bike. So. to pass safely. There's a beta there. The beta guys actually did pretty good today. I didn't see too many of them stuck. Speaking of beta, do you guys see where Benny Bloss actually got to a main event at Supercross San Diego this weekend? Beta fan. I think they're a good company. Speaking of that, I've been tr trying to figure out like what would be a modern bike that has similar power delivery characteristics to my big XR. If you guys have any ideas, put them in the comments. Um, what I've come up with so far, as a popular opinion, is the Beta Beta 390. It's supposed to be just a very torquey, yet controllable four-stroke. It's basically a stroker version of the Beta 350, and it's not nearly as amped up as like the 450 bikes. I've also looked into like the Sherco 300s or even their 450, which is a lot milder than the uh, motocross based 450. So I would appreciate some feedback on that if I were to get an electric start bike. Like I said, there's a lot of things I like about this XR. 
but uh, kind of looking for something that carries the uh, strengths of the XR into more modern. I know I could get an XR 650L, but I'm not 100% against that, but then I'm adding another 40 or 50 pounds to this bike, and you know, I don't mind it weighing 300. 10 pounds. I don't know if I want it to weigh 350 pounds. Anyway. I might just stick with this though. It's been very dependable. And so far, at least with the end of this race, I'm 6th in points in my class. And with my T300 last year, I finished 5th. Um, I'd say the competition's every bit as stiff, if not stiffer, so I've really only lost one one spot on the big XR compared to the TE in this series. Which isn't bad because I bought this bike really to run the KXCR Adventure Series. I had never planned to use this bike as my main hair scramble bike. It just kind of worked out that way. And I've just been having fun on it. Get a lot of compliments about it. A lot of guys come up, ask me whether it's if it's a 400. I'm like, no, nah, it's a 600. And you know, everybody knows somebody that used to have one or have one themselves, or they talk about Scott Summers. It's a good conversation starter. And um, They're just a solid bike. There's some, there's just a lot of advantages that people don't think about. Everybody wants to go lightweight, have uh, modern forks and all this stuff, but not everybody's an A rider, and so it's while it's nice to have that stuff, are you really using it? These XRs are just such so low uh, maintenance and just very reliable. And I don't think you can say that about modern four strokes. I think modern four strokes can be reliable, but they're not low maintenance. The intervals are very tight. Which is why I've kind of stuck to two strokes on the modern bikes, but this XR has kind of given me a different attitude towards the four stroke. Which is why I'm trying to find something that would be similar. I don't want anything too high strung, high compression, something that's going to be flaming out all the time. So yeah, this is my, again, this is my first lap only. Um, second lap, I thought I felt better, but it showed a little bit slower on the time. Uh, and then my third lap was actually the fastest. I had a 31 minute, some change, third lap. Um, there was less people out on the course at that point, and I knew the course at that point. less mess ups. So that probably explains that. I feel pretty good today after doing this race. Usually I'm pretty sore 24 hours after the fact, but I think since basically this was just a first year trail ride, <laughs> I mean, you expended a lot of energy just kind of keeping the thing upright. 
course if I had to pick it up I that took some strength but otherwise it was kind of a low intensity race The course was uh, six miles, so an hour and 36 minutes we only went, in my case, 18 miles. I guess one thing I can talk about is gear selection for these type of temperatures. Again, it was only 27 degrees. One thing I didn't do well was my Camelback. Um, I had kept it in the truck until the race started, but and I had, you know, liquid for this first lap, but by the second lap it was starting to pull like a slushy through the hose, and then um, by the third lap it was completely frozen I had nothing so that would not have been good if I had intended to kind of you know trail ride all day or something I would have I've seen um, you know, something like a insulated hose for those things and if I would have maybe ran it under my shirt kind of my outer layer that might have Jose again. <laughs> I thought it would have been fine. Otherwise, my gear selection worked out pretty well. Um, I've been snowboarding. I used some snowboarding wool socks made by Smart Wool. I actually like, doubled them up because unlike snowboard boots, you know, your typical Garnet uh, dirt bike boots aren't insulated much. So I just doubled up on some snowboarding smart wool socks. I ran um, base layer by Under Armour for, I think it's called Cold Gear, top and bottom. I ran some silk pants under on top of that. And then I, I got these, I don't know if they're like snowmobile pants or what. They're kind of a... It just looked like an insulated motocross pant that I wore on the out, outer. That dude was checking his phone. You be all right, man? That was a weird place to scroll Facebook, but maybe he was calling for help. I obviously didn't stop. I felt a little bit guilty about that. Anyway, so the cold gear, um, under armor, base layer, silk, and then um, some type of insulated motorcycle pant. Um, same thing on top, but then I, you know, I, of course I have my chest protector, I wore kind of a padded shirt under that, and then I just wore like a windbreaker for my outer layer really wasn't that much on, on top, but I guess just that many layers kept me warm, so that all worked out good. I was, had no problem. My hands got cold for a second, and then it was like, as I got to work in the clutch and the throttle and the brakes and everything, and they kind of got warmed up. Oh shit. Oops. Try not to cuss in my videos. I forgot about that fall. Still kind of surprised that this was my second fastest lap. This is coming up out of the woods. Then we kind of go across the field a little bit. I recall. Got the red dirt. 
it was just a little bit wet, so about the only mud I had under, under my fenders was this red color. I wasn't real sure of that going through it. I wasn't sure if it was frozen or not, so I take it kind of easy and then get out in the grass here before I get on it. I trusted the grass more than I did wet looking dirt today. This is kind of in the vicinity of the motocross track. This, I don't believe is the motocross track, but that's what that red clay dirt looks like on the motocross track. Kind of a downhill here. It's actually got pretty solid dirt on it, but I didn't know that for sure on this lap. Tell you what, I trusted just snow and leaves more than I did the course, so if there was a place to take it, I did. I don't know how much of an advantage it was here, but someone else had made the trail, so I followed it. couple changes I've made to this bike from stock, which are very minor. And besides the rejetting, it's got the uh, FMF PowerCore 4 full exhaust on it. It's got a uh, foam air filter on it. And I've I'm running flex bars. That's something I changed out during the season, which I'm really, really liking. A lot less more, a lot less soreness on my wrists, a lot less impact to my hands and stuff. And something that I changed, but then kind of went backwards and undid was I had a skid plate on it, but. Before that mud or last race, I, I, I had just gotten tired of the skid plate just kind of scooping up mud. And the, I mean, after after two races ago, I must have had 20 pounds of mud, and then that really started to affect how the bike handled. Wanted to wash out the front. And you see there, it kind of bounced off of that and took another route. And anyway. Um, I read where Scott Summers went, went back to just a stock skid plate for similar reasons. Uh, it's not really a skid plate, it's more like a three little round stock bars that kind of deflect around the engine and case. So I've done that the last two races and um, I think I'm just going to stick with that. I, I don't have all this mud that I'm carrying around with me. And it's not like you hear about people cracking the cases on these 600s anyway. So coming up here, this downhill, this is just a free fall. And 
Williams was really a pucker moment here. I don't know if anybody else experienced that hill that way as well, but it's that guy went down and I thought, oh, I need to avoid him. And I just had zero breaks and there wasn't anything I could do. I just kind of ride it out. So that was one of the, the scarier little downhills for all three laps. So now I kind of coming around the backside perimeter of the property. These trails are in almost every race at Russell Creek. sign that you're about done with a lap. Again, I'm sticking to the grass a little bit because I'm not sure if this is slick yet or not. Ends up it's not bad, but I didn't know that first lap. Take us through some where tires were from previous races. And then we curl up here around towards the trailer here directly, so less than a minute left. I don't think that was the ideal line through there. I took a, a high road in the last two laps. seconds. And like I said, I'm going to be in fourth place, which I pretty much maintain throughout the rest of the race. So, hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you guys like hearing the XR thump along. If so, uh, stay tuned and you'll see my next video, hopefully, at uh, Cape City. See ya.